and welcome back to Dozzy's Television Workshop, where today um, I've got this bizarre thing to repair. So have a little zoom in, shall we? This is an infrared camera. Um, as you can see, we've got a lot of bits and pieces going on on the back here. We've got a USB port, uh, some sort of probably Molex connectors, some switching power supplies. And um, this comes from a wheel alignment system that's in uh, my mate Miles' garage. And all of a sudden it packed him work in. Um, uh, and yeah, I had to uh, go and see him and he said, would you mind having a look at this? And I said, well, let's uh, get it out and have a look, see what it's doing. And it's on a large sort of bar assembly that's probably getting on for eight to 10 feet wide. And there's two of these cameras, one on each end, and they connect back to a computer system. Apparently you hang some like flags on the wheels and it tells you your caster and camber and in and out and shake it all about and the rest of it. Very clever. So it uses it for tracking up cars. Um, this stopped working. And um, anyway, we had a look at the errors and sort of surmised that one camera wasn't doing its thing. And um, sure enough, on the working camera, all of these infrared emitting diodes here, infrared light emitting diodes? I, anyway, whatever they are, I always refer to them as IREDs rather than uh, LEDs, but your mileage may vary. Anyway, on the working camera, they're all pulsing. And on this one, they're not. In fact, um, we took a little bit of footage here, so I shall insert that now. So that's what that this camera is doing. And I'm thinking, I wonder if some of these diodes have just gone open circuit. And then of course we have the problem of detecting them. So what I've got is my mobile phone. I'm not sure whether these cameras are that sensitive to infrared, but I do know that my mobile phone is, because quite clearly we shot that footage. So yeah, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put my phone on front mounted camera. There we go. I've actually uh, pressed record so you can sort of see what I'm doing. I'm just going to stand that there as best I can. And um, we can try and work out which ones of these diodes have gone and then see if we can't go about replacing them. So, yeah, there's my green label down at the bottom. I suppose if I mark them up one at a time. I have got my workshop power supply. I've set it for a couple of volts, so I don't suspect they'll be very bright. And I've limited it to 20 milliamps, because what I don't want to be doing is damaging any of the surrounding circuitry. What I could really do, oh, that's ideal. Look at that, hang on, just one carton big in a minute. What we need to do is support it in a bit of a stand. And that looks ideal to me. It's the old printed circuit board stand. Oh, made for the job. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hook around these LEDs. Clearly, the first thing we're going to need to do is work out the polarity of the LEDs. And then if I get a Sharpie... I can just simply mark each one that's faulty. That's going to be my plan. Of course, I suppose I should really change the lot, but, well, I think the thing to do is just to change what we've got. If there are any faulty, it might be a driver chip problem, couldn't it? But, um, right, let's have a look. So I'm going for this inside row diode, which is, oh, it's all backwards on the camera, isn't it? that one there to start with. Um, see if it should sort of light up pink, I think, on the camera. So that one could be faulty, couldn't it? Oh, hang on. No, there we go. So that one is OK. Next one down. Not so much, unless they're... Why would you... 
they are sort of serious strings. No, that one's okay. Look, we've got a glow there. Okay, next one down again. That one is okay. That one, not so much. And the bottom one's okay. So that's that second one there. I'm just going to mark that there. All right, let's go for that outer row. That one's good. That one's good. That one's good. That one is good. Is that bottom one failed? Looks like that bottom one has failed. Might be better off if I dim the old workshop light a bit, mightn't it? Can't see any of them glowing now. What if I just pull my probes off and just go straight in neat with the uh, things? Not got enough energy here really to do any damage by shorting anything out. That one's good. That bottom one there, though, that one just there, is suspect. I shall mark it with a blob. Right. I'm going to go across the top now. So yeah, there isn't a row without a diode that is at least underperforming, which is interesting because if you look back at that footage from a few minutes ago, um, there was at least one row that was fully working, wasn't there? Right, I'm just going to stop my phone camera. Now, the other problem I've got is I have no idea what specification these LEDs are. Um, there are about three different wavelengths of infrared LED you can buy and they come in many sorts of shapes and sizes, some starting from pennies, others going up to about eight quid each. So uh, just to see, um, I've bought some of these uh, from Bright Components. I've dealt with them before. They're on eBay. They seem all right. And... Um, yeah, these are 850 nanometer LEDs. Um, these are the most common and therefore also very much the cheapest, which was convenient. Um, so I have got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight to change. How many did I buy? I bought 10. So um, yeah, let's get those quickly switched over or replaced and then... Um, Give it back to Miles and uh, see if it works. Now I'm going to switch my soldering iron tip to the uh, larger tip because I'm hoping I should be able to scooch in there, heat it up from the back and then just extract one LED in one easy solution. One easy movement, that's the word I'm looking for. Um, right. Let's uh, switch the iron on and do that. First things first, let's, uh, you can see where I've marked these up with a Sharpie. So let's just uh, get some leaded solder in there. Oh, it's fallen straight out. 
and the polarity is thankfully marked on the board. This is going to be uh, quite a simple task, I think. Um, who's at the desoldering braid? We might need the old hole cleaning needle here. Let's go in through this side, just see if we can clear that hole out. Which is going to be stubborn. How dare it. There she goes. So, because I recently came across some LEDs that weren't quite the same as the ones that came out, what I'm just going to do is I'm going to look inside the little, where are you? You're there. Inside, you'll see one sort of larger shaped thing and the larger shaped electrode looks like it's on the flat side to me let's get some seeing eyes on the go which is on the flat side i'm just going to confirm that's the same here yep it is that's wonderful so let's just install the new led and I've just spotted, I may have a problem. Oh no, no, that's absolutely perfect. I was wondering whether they were going to go in flush or not. But no, that seems uh, perfect. So let's uh, solder this fella up. Give them a little trim. Well, it's got a chance, isn't it? Let's uh, repeat for all the others. <laughs> that's uh, completed but how do we know if it works 
I'm going to have to run it around there, put it in, and um, see what happens. Right, I'll report back. Brilliant. So we come out of there then, you should see it on there. Amazing. Well, that's a great success. Uh, thank goodness for that. A saving of hundreds of pounds on a new camera. So uh, there we go. And more electronics saved from landfill. Very important not to forget that one. Anyway, uh, thank you very much for watching. Click like, subscribe, do all that rubbish. And I'll see you on the weekend for another exciting edition of Dozzy's Television Workshop. Cheers now. Bye. Well, that's a great success. The tracking thingy is working beautifully. So, uh, yeah, needed that. Give us a little boost every now and again. Let's do this again because it's shit. I've waffled on too long. Hello and welcome back to Dolls. Let's have the window open, shall we? Hang on. A little bit of natural in. There we go. That's much nicer, isn't it?